to this side, Super Tendo Boy, and welcome back to my adventure map. But today, I will be talking about terraforming and making your adventure map have natural looking terrain. So, probably um, the best tool for uh, making terrain, in my opinion, is uh, MC Edit. And there's two reasons for that. And one is because you can select areas and you can run the set biome. Uh, filter which allows you to change uh, the biome of a certain area which is very helpful for grassy areas setting it to jungle to make the grass look nice or to enable snow in um, cold areas by setting the biome to taiga and um, I'm actually using an older version of MC Edit just because I kind of like I'm more used to its interface and it has some tools that I'm not sure how to use in the newer version I've tried the newer version, um, I recommend using that one instead, but for me, I'm just going to be demonstrating in this older version. Um, but probably the most useful thing for me when creating terrain using MC Edit is by using the brush tool, which gives us, uh, if you set the brush to round, you're able to get this circular little brush here, and you can set this to any block you want. We're just going to go ahead and set this to sand, and we're going to set the height up to 7, and you can change the length and the width. And then if we just drag this across here, we can see that we get ourselves a nice little sand dune. And then we can go ahead and hit save here. Now I'm gonna show you guys another really helpful tool for um, working on terrain and adventure maps, and that is World Painter. So I'll see you guys when I'm over there. So here we are in World Painter, and I'm just gonna go up to File, and I'm going to hit um, open, or actually, hold on, import, and then go to Minecraft map. And I should be able to pick up my adventure map. Hit open, and let's just grab the level and open there. Hit um, OK, and then it imports our world here. And that'll just take a bit here. And um, but yeah, World Painter, pretty much what it is, is it's made specifically for creating terrain um, in Minecraft, and it creates little smoother things than you could create in MC Edit. But um, it's a little tricky to always import stuff and whatnot in it. So I usually use MC Edit instead because it's a lot quicker. Um, but if we just scroll around here, you can see our adventure map, and it's pretty tiny here because. Uh, actually, World Painter is meant for much larger scale things. So, as you can see, we have brushes over here, and then we can just select whatever block we want, which we could select little sand here. And then if we just click once right here, we can see that it creates a little bit of sand, or if we right-click, we can also use grass. Um, but let's just go ahead and go back to sand, and let's just put sand over the top of that and as you can see we're just creating flat areas of sand but we can also use this uh, raised mountain tool and as you can see we can create uh, little bumps here and we can go over top of them again to make even bigger ones and these actually make really smooth looking terrain terrain that you might actually see generated in Minecraft and as you can see we got a little topography here that allows us to see the height of whatever we're building, which is really helpful. Um, but as I said, if you have redstone or anything underground in your world, World Painter might not be the thing for you because it gets a little messy um, when it comes to uh, working on such a large scale. Now that I've showed you some third-party things that we can use, I'm going to head back into Minecraft and show you some other tricks that I use, but you've probably never heard of them before, or maybe you have, but we'll see. And here we are in Minecraft again. And I'm actually gonna just show you two more little tricks that I use in my adventure maps that um, aren't necessarily used by a lot of other map makers. And these are just small tips that you can use if you want. Um, but one is uh, using clone to uh, and spawn eggs to create your own trees or structures that you might want to create multiple times so if we just uh, drop down tree three which is a squid that is having a clock attached to it that's having 
a tree somewhere out in the world constantly cloned to it we get a high tree and then we can go ahead and hit tree one and we get a slightly smaller tree and then drop down tree two and we get an even smaller tree and you can easily use this to create forests or if you have a village with repeating um, houses you can also use it for that um, and another trick I like to use is uh, piston extension which is actually a block that was changed in 1.8 and it no longer has a hitbox or a hitbox or really any way to detect it except for the fact that it blocks off water sort of like a permanent air block except you can use set block air to get rid of it so if we drop down here and we just go ahead and do set block relative coordinates whoops and then we go to piston extension extension and we should be able to see that now we sort of have a permanent air block now you might th be thinking well how is that really useful well it allows me to create um rivers exactly the way i want them without having to use barriers which are solid and as you can see without any hitboxes here i have created a river that follows the exact path i want to which can be really helpful, but um, once again, it's rather specific to just using it with water. But another helpful tip that I like to use, um, usually um, in sort of mountainous areas where I need the water to fall in a certain way. But yeah, those are some tips and tricks I have for um, making terrain in adventure maps. If you have any tips or tricks that I did not show in this video, make sure to put them in the comments below so other people can see them and I can see them and we can all benefit from the rest of our knowledge. Um, but that's about it for this video, and thank you for watching.